This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, on this tutorial, I'm gonna break this painting down into steps that are easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can create it too and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm gonna break this tutorial down into steps that are easy to follow so that you learn about the app as well as the painting techniques. Now the app I'm using is Procreate, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. But in terms of this app, Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. I'm using one of their default color profiles, which is sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to use the default brushes that come free with the app. So within airbrushing, we're gonna use the soft brush, the medium brush, possibly the hard brush. Within inking, I'm gonna be using the studio pen. And within organic, I'm gonna be using the rainforest brush. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette. And each of these colors has linked to it, associated with it, a code called a hexadecimal code. And you need to type the codes in one at a time into this box. Press, return, enter, and the color appears up here. Then you can just tap it together and construct the palette yourself. All of these codes are down in the video description. There's quite a few. So next to the codes, there's a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is the place where you can go and support this channel, gain access to exclusive content, extended tutorials, and other things. Thank you so much to everyone that is supporting me currently. It makes a huge difference to this channel. And with all of that said and done, I'm going to get started. Now I'm going to turn this A4 canvas to the portrait orientation. And on layer one, I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to choose the first color on the top row and drag from the little color circle into the canvas. Let go and it should flood fill the whole area. I'm going to stay on the same layer. I'm going to go to the second color. I'm going to go to the brushes, airbrushing, soft brush at the top. I'm going to put the brush size pretty big, 30% size and 100% opacity and right in the center of the canvas. I'm just going to do a band of this all the way across. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments here, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that across pretty significantly. It's about the 80%. Then I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer, layer two, back to my colors. I'm going to go for the third color on the first row. Still with the soft brush, with an airbrushing, I'm going to turn it down, however, from 30 down to 15% size, still 100% opacity. And again, through that center area, just a band of this. Again, to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur that across again, pretty significantly. This time to about 50% deselect. I'm going to create a new layer, layer three. I'm still going to use the soft brush with an airbrushing and I'm going to use a fourth color along. I'm going to turn the size of the brush down to about 2% two, 2 and really significantly low at around 3% opacity. And I'm just going to bring some dashes of this. Now I'm almost creating like a an arc with this. So I'll zoom in a little bit just to show you this. I'll turn the opacity up so you can see it. I'm creating this kind of a shape. So a series of these kind of shapes, but really faint, really subtle, so you can barely see them. So I'm gonna put it down to the 3% again. And again, I'm just creating some of these kind of shapes, not too many. We just want to get rid of the flatness. Slightly more illuminated underside of the clouds. We can bring it down so they kind of blend in and disappear to the lighter area there. Stay on this same layer, go back to the colors, and I'm actually gonna go back to the first color on the first row. I'm gonna have the size at 2% still, and still pretty low, maybe about 5% this time. And we're just creating a series of textures, blotches, keep it quite fragmented still, don't join them together. So importantly, you've got these shapes, but you can see the gaps that kind of disconnect them through. 
and have them going kind of low in this bottom area. And then they will just press more lightly and start to disappear into the light. We'll do a few over here. We're probably going to have some really light colors kind of bleaching them out so you can't even notice them in most places, but we're going to start with this effect anyway. Stay on this same layer, but I'm going to go to my brushes, organic, rainforest. Now I'm going to reset it just to show you how I'm going to amend it. So this is how it is by default. Tap on it and we're going to go to the stroke path and the spacing, which is 27 by default. We're going to put it up to about 50%. Click done. And we're still saying with the first color on the top row, we're going to put it up to maybe about 10% size, about 30% opacity. I'm just going to do a band of that across. You can see it's bringing in some subtler, but bigger textures. Maybe turn it down a bit more, 8%. Do another one. Down again, 5%. And just do a few more bands of this. Cut it through. And it's just bringing those areas together a little bit more. We can bring it upwards as well. A touch more. Maybe put it back up. 15% and do that a little bit at the top. With this whole layer, I'm just going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur that in somewhat to about 5%. Then I'm going to create a new layer, layer four. Go back to my colors. We're going to skip to the second row and the second color. I'm going to go to our airbrushing medium brush. I'm going to have it at 2% size and well, about 90% opacity. And then just about halfway, in fact, we can just start to create some distance and mountain range. So we don't need to really go into a huge amount of detail with this, but just the suggestion that in some areas it kind of raises and then dips. So we're using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price. You can access over 20 different categories of brushes like fur, lettering, nature, and animals, and many others. So for example, sometimes I struggle with things like grass textures and a quick search here on Brush Galaxy, and you get access to page after page. A really interesting, great grass stamps, and grass textures for you to experiment with. Start now and get the first seven days for free Join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description. Then we can drag from the color to the lower section and just flood, flood fill there. Now, if there's any little anomalies there that hasn't quite filled in, you can just go back over it and manually fill that. Now, it's a subtle feature that's going to be very much in the distance anyway, so I wouldn't spend really any time on that. But we could go back to the first color on the middle row and perhaps with the same brush, we're going to turn it down to the 1% and about 20% opacity. We'll just go into this area and just add a little bit of texture. So it's not completely flat in the background there. It has the suggestion of a change of tone. We really don't need to spend long doing that at all. It's just stopping it being too flat. And as I explained over on this side, it's going to be largely bleached out by the thing. So I'm really just almost scribbling it in. Don't spend long on that. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer. Layer five, back to my colors. Third color, medium brush within airbrushing still. 2% size, back up to about the 90% opacity. And we're just going to create a closer to set of mountains. Like that, and then we can just drag to flood fill that lower section once more. You can continue to push and amend some of these shapes. Don't just live with the first collection. If you're not pleased, you can always go back with the eraser, set to the medium brush with an airbrushing. 2% size, 100% opacity, and just start to erase some of these areas too. It's not just about adding, you can remove. You play around until you're happiest with the shapes. Stay on the same layer. I'm gonna to go to the fourth color on the middle row. Medium brush with an airbrushing still, 2% size, but we're gonna turn it down to about the 15%. Zoom in a touch. The light is going to come from this side. That means that anything that will be facing here, changing angles, you're going to have some patches of light that hit over on one side of some of these mountain areas more. 
We don't need to spend, again, very long doing this, but just a hint, just that suggestion that there's textures catching the light. Bring them down a little bit more as well, have them join up perhaps in places, just scattering it in and really being a little bit haphazard. It's the colour combination that is going to sell this illusion. It's not really about the detail and the shapes. Back to our layers and create a new layer, layer six. Still the same brush. We're going to go for the bisque colour, 2% size. Put it all the way up to 100% opacity for this. And we're bringing it in from this side. And we're just creating a closer to, even closer, mountain range compared to before. And then we can drag to flood fill the lower section. Again, just push it around, get those shapes exactly how you'd want them. You can always go back later and amend these if you're not entirely happy, but they're going to be increasingly more of a background feature anyway, as you'll see. We'll go to the sixth color along, same size, 2%, but we're going to take it down to 15% again, zoom in a little bit, and we're just adding this color into the mix, similar to affect the, the mountain range behind that. We'll just go around the top edge, anything that might face over to this side. And then we can bring some of these shapes downwards as well, closer to us. Now all of these mountain areas are on separate layers. So if we want to move them about after we've finished, shift them, find a placement that works best, then we can do that too. I'll just get them in there to begin with. Make some shapes that perhaps just some lines that splinter off and become mountain ridges. Maybe not too many of them are exactly the same, but you get the idea. Not going to quite join everything together. And then we're going to have them here too. Now the light's going to be in this kind of area, so it's going to impact it perhaps on the left side as well as the right side of things. So it almost does like a switch here. And now it's face things facing this way, at least in this area. Okay, so we're going to create a new layer, layer seven. Go to my color palette. I'm going to go to the eighth color. Still with the medium brush within airbrushing, 2% size, 100% opacity, and we're just going to bring something in from over here, angle it down, and we can flood fill, fill that area. Now we're going to get the suggestion of some trees perhaps here, just stuff that is growing from here. So just along that top edge, I can just push up to create some little shapes, some bumps, just some features there. So it doesn't look completely flat, much closer to compared to the other things. Now it doesn't look brilliant close up, but that's fine. Then we can go backwards to the seventh color, turn the strength of that down to 15% again, and we just create some extra texture in here, still a medium brush with an airbrushing, obviously. Just creating some shapes, adding some textures in here. Okay, now we've got most of the mountain range in there. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer eight. I'm going to change this little N by tapping on it and scrolling down to add. And that's changed the blend mode. I'm going to go in with my airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put the brush size really quite big. It's around 50% and it's got to be low. I'm going to put about 5% opacity. We'll go to the eighth color on the top row and I'm just going to bring in on this side initially some of that color and it's bringing in some really nice warmth over on this side as you can see i'm happy for it to come down as well and just start to affect this whole area sweeping it in i want it to be more focused in this area so i can do a few more taps just there so once it's kind of roughly looking like this you don't want to overdo this but you know we've gone quite far with that we're going to go to our colors we're going to choose the end color on the middle row still with the soft brush with an airbrushing i'm going to put it down to the well stay on the two percent ten percent opacity and we're going to continue to just build in some areas here and you can kind of use the textures that are already there as a guide they will help us Now 
We put it on the low opacity, so it's not going to appear too drastic, whatever we do. But even then, perhaps we could put it down to the five if you want to be even more kind of gradualistic about it and just really subtle. We'll go over here and we'll start adding more of the, the light textures over here, perhaps as well. Just remember to keep it, some of the little darker shapes in between still there. If you accidentally get rid of them, then you can always go back in with the eraser, set to something similar. So the soft brush with an airbrushing, 2% size, maybe I don't know, a bit stronger, so 30% strength. And you can always go in there and just remove some of this effect anyway, but we're gonna stick with the brush. Bring it across. And then down here, maybe have a section where we don't add any of this texture, bring it down a bit further, like so. Again, I'm just judging this by the textures that were already there, looking for a pale section and just bringing out some of the highlights in there, circling it in, whatever you have to do just to bring it out. It's on that super low percentage, so it's really subtle. You're not going to go too far wrong with this. And then I'll bring it across, tapping it in, allow it to become quite textured, and that's quite a nice effect, I think. Quite dramatic. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in a little bit more, it's about the 5%. Stay on the same colour, I'm going to put the brush up to about 15% size, 25% opacity and just make a decision where the sun is going to be and just tap it in a few times to really bring out that brightness. Up to 30%, a couple more taps, up to 40%, another tap, maybe another more, another one more, another couple. And you can see it's really bringing that effect together. Back down again, 2% size, 5% opacity and again maybe a bit more, 10%. And because we've got that real brightness now, we can just ramp up some of the textures that are really close to it. Gives us just a little bit more bravery, I think. Add more. So we're going to go to our layers and create a new layer, layer nine. I'm going to go back to our colors and use the first color on the bottom row. Again, go back to the airbrushing medium brush, maybe 5% size, 100% opacity. And I'm going to have a more closer to feature here. Maybe have it come down into this section, a little bit of a rise here, and then I'm going to have it dipping down again. So you can see that it's kind of obscuring a lot of the features we've already got, and that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to then drag to flood fill that lower section like that. Now you can use the mixture of the eraser. So I'll go to the eraser, medium brush, 100% opacity, 2% size, and I can just go in there and chip away some of the shapes. If I don't like the way that they've kind of fallen, then I can just go in and mix them up a little bit. And the brush, same again, turn it down 2%, a bit more control over some of these features. few stones that are sticking up perhaps closer to us. I'm going to go to the second color. I'm going to go to the layer. I'm going to tap on the layer and put on alpha lock. Now I'm going to move back to the soft brush with an airbrushing. 20% size, 10% opacity. And I'm just going to add some of this slightly lighter tone to some of these areas that are just going to push them back a little bit further and down here in this center and then lower area I want to keep them dark so I'm not going over those areas mainly just over here a little bit down there then I'm going to create a new layer layer 10 I'm going to go to my brushes inking studio pen put it up to a hundred percent size hundred percent opacity and I'm going to go back to the first color on the bottom row and I'm going to introduce a tree shape down here and I'm going to have a little bit of a twist to it and then disappear up here. Now obviously it needs to be thicker at the base. All trees will have a thicker trunk. 
sometimes quite a lot, sometimes only a little, but there will always be a little bit more thickness near the base. Then we can have it branching off, literally. And we can introduce some kind of wobble here and there and have it disappearing into nothing. Much of this is going to be obscured by foliage. When we get to a certain point, we can have the branch just kicking off and disappearing. And we'll try to come up with your own shapes. This brush is pressure sensitive. Also, you need to bear that in mind. So the harder you press, the thicker the shape. And when you let go, it all will disappear. Now it's on the maximum setting. Now, if you feel for these some of these smaller branches, it's too sensitive. You can turn it back down. I'll put it at 30%. And that way you can do the smaller branches as they kick off and then release the pressure. So I want it to be quite branch heavy. I want quite a lot of branches, especially near the top. Although we're going to obscure them, there'll be some that show through. We're really, it's probably this section we need to be focused on the most. So we'll add a few more into this area. And then if there's any gaps and bits that need to be filled in later, then we can always go back and do that. Gonna have a few that just kick down into this area, maybe. Now we're gonna have to make it lighter as it reacts to the sun that's really there. And obviously we'll need to bleach out some of that dark tone. But initially we'll just get the, the shape in. I'm gonna go to my layers and I'm gonna create a new layer, but I'm gonna put it underneath layer 10. And on this layer, we're going to go to the ninth color on the top row. We're going to go in with the rainforest brush, which we have already amended. I'm going to have the size of it at 2% and 100% opacity. And just in and around some of these areas, we're just going to create some foliage. Now, this is the foliage that's very much on the rear of the tree and Certainly when it gets nearest to the sun, it's going to be translucent or we'll have the light coming through it. We might even put the brush size up to a slightly bigger on the 2%, but not too much. Just allows us to fill in some bigger areas a little bit more quickly. But we're just creating kind of texture early on. And we can allow it to just fragment when it gets to near the sun. Fill it in in some areas. Allow some gaps to remain though. That's absolutely fine. We're going to bring it all the way across. It's not going to look quite right over at this section. But we're going to use the alpha lock to shut down some of that lighter colour over on this side. We'll just get it filled in initially. Just scribble it in. Take it all the way to the end some of these branches and then just make up some extra kind of points in the location generally. You can zoom back out and get the overall effect. It's not quite going to look right until we've got more of it, but we just need to stick with it. Trust that it will make sense in the end. Trust that it will make sense in the end. And then down in this section two, Just some bits that stick out. Okay, I'm going to go to that layer, tap on it, put on alpha lock, change brushes to the, change colors to the seventh color along on the bottom row. And I'm just gonna go in and scribble in over this side. It's away from the sun. It's going to have much more of a silhouette. It's not going to have that same translucent effect until we're over in this region, really. I suppose we could just go in with the airbrushing soft brush for this. 15% size, about 50% opacity. 
And again, we could just create that effect this way until we get to about halfway anyway. And then we'll go back to the organic rainforest brush and just start to do it in a slightly more organic way over on this side. Perhaps we'll need to shift to the eighth color along and we can start to use this color instead, just scribbling it in. And then we switch to the ninth color. And then really over at this side, we want to preserve that brightness. So we're not going to touch much of that at all. And with that entire layer, I'm going to turn off the alpha lock by tapping and unticking it. I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in about 3%. Go back to my layers, top layer, and create a layer on top of that, layer 12. And we're going to do something similar again, but we're going to add some sort of darker notes on top for most of the scene. So I'm going to go back to the seventh color on the bottom row, still with the rainforest brush. And this time it's going to be obscuring much of the branch structure that we've put in. So these are going to be areas of foliage that are more foreground in front of many of the branches. When we get to about halfway, we'll change to the eighth again. And then just starts to scribble in nice big sections. But when we get to this side, maybe we'll just do some sm smaller clumps. Little circles of it. So we're using the, the brush texture and the way that we apply it in conjunction together. And it will help this effect. Over here, just little circles of it. And over on this side too smaller circles we'll come into the lighter section so again we're going to move to the ninth color in fact we need a brighter color so let's go for the eighth color on the top row and have that in the mix too circle it in again we just want to obscure many of these branches before we go too far with this, we really ought to go back to the tree structure, which was on layer 10. Tap on it, put on alpha lock, go back to our colors. Now we don't need to use the brightest, brightest of oranges up here, but we'll go to maybe the end color on the bottom row. So we're with the airbrushing soft brush, 15% size, about 20% opacity, and we can just go over the branches in this area we want to get rid of that absolute silhouette and just soften them in, soften them back a little bit. And you, it doesn't matter if it chips away here a little bit too. Perhaps it'd be a bit more controlled when we get to that area, 5%. Just take it into the corner of that area and just take away some of the branch heaviness there a little bit. And that helps to soften it in. Go back to layer 11. We need some slight more foliage as underpinning. So we're still with the rainforest brush for the eighth color on the bottom row two percent size 90 percent opacity i just want to thicken up some of this just circling it in like i said earlier i do want to leave some gaps you can really fill in quite large areas too Go to the color on the end, the bottom row. And the effects here that we're creating is all about combinations. So we, we're just kind of building it and building it and building it really. Lots of different layers. And the cumulative effect is what's going to really work for us. Back up to layer 12. And perhaps we'll create a new layer, layer 13. We'll stay on this end color, still with the same brush, slightly lower on the 2%, slightly lower on the opacity, so about 60%. Zoom in. And we just want to start now bringing in 
some of this light colour over the, the top, some of this. Perhaps we'll go back a colour first, actually, the ninth colour. We'll do that first, we'll build it up more gradually. Zoom in. We've got some dark colours there, the way you can see through the foliage and you, you're going to want to leave some of that dark colour. But then you're building it up in layers and layers until it comes into the foreground as a kind of lighter tone. So again, we'll switch back to the colour on the end of the bottom row, lower on the 2% still. And now we'll just more carefully start to imagine like the top edge, some of these shapes. So if you've got like a collection, like a round, almost a blob of this foliage around that top part, we're just adding a bit more of the highlight. So I'm just tapping it in. And then certainly along this top edge, you're going to notice more that highlight. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 30 and then we're just going to create little circles of this. We want like smaller collections of this light. So just smaller little round forms just to really break it up a little bit more. Okay, we're starting to get a bit closer to the kind of effect that will work. So, we're going to create a new layer, layer 14, change the N blend mode from normal to add, and we're going to stay with this colour, which is the N colour on the bottom row, stay with the 2% size and the 30% opacity, and we're just going to use this now, start building in some extra bright highlights, and certainly around this edge, when we get closest to the sun, this is going to be something that really works well for us. But we could also extend it further this way too. So put it up slightly more, maybe slightly higher on the 2%. And we can really build in some of this brightness encroaching further to the left. Okay, so I'm going to take layers 13 to 11 and just pinch them all together. And then with this tree layer, I'm just going to slightly reposition, reformat it. So I'm going to go to the transform, freeform. I'm going to extend it, stretch it rather, downward. Pull it up a little bit more, downward. Don't worry about any gaps that it reveals. We can amend those, stretch it out a little bit more. I just think it works a bit better when it's a bit more squat and generally a bit happier with that form. I'm going to go and duplicate the layer. Bottom version, I'm going to go to the blend mode, which is on normal, and I'm going to scroll down to add. And it just subtly adds a bit more of a glow around the edge. We could slide and duplicate that again, and it just extends it even further. We'll blend or merge those two, layer 11 together, merge down. You can see it. And then by tapping on the A, we can control exactly how far we want to push that to. So 100% or max is a little bit strong, so dial it back just a touch to about 70%. So back on the top layer, I'm going to create a new layer above that, layer 12. Again, I'm going to change the blend mode to add. Still with the rainforest brush, I'm going to go for the eighth color on the bottom row. 2% size, 40% opacity. Zoom in a little, and I'm just going to add some of this really nice kind of red glow over to this side as well. It feels a little bit muted. It definitely needs some of that warmth and that vibrancy over on this side too. And again, we're just thinking about keeping some of the separation of areas. We don't want it to become just flat. We want to keep we want to keep some of the, the sense of different areas 
So we get a kind of shape forming here, another shape forming here, another one here. And then we've got gaps between those different areas. And I'll switch to the next color, the ninth color. And again, I did different areas. It's got a slightly more brighter tone. And then we've got the more orangey yellow on the very end. Now, some of the effect here needs to be bleached out a little bit more, so we can easily do that by going back to layer 11. Tap on it and put on Alpha Lock. Go to the ninth color on the top row. We're going to go with the soft brush with an airbrushing, 3% size, 60% opacity, and just some of these areas here where it meets the sun. We'll just knock it back a little bit. There's only so far I can go back because this color is set brightness. Okay, so we're going to start working on the lower areas a little bit more now. We may come back to that. Just going to go back to the layer 11. We see you've got a little gap there, so turn off the alpha lock. Go in with, well, you can go in with the smudge tool, frankly, and just smudge out that little imperfection there. So from layer 11, I'm going to create a new layer above. So layer 13 is now below layer 12. I'm going to tap on layer 13 and put on clipping mask which means it's linked to layer 11. I'm going to go in with my airbrushing medium brush. I'm going to use the second color on the bottom row. I'm going to put it to low on the 2% size and about 30% opacity. And I'm going to start bringing in some lines that follow along these branches. So the tree roots are down here. So we just have some sort of wiggles and lines that twist and collide and gather and bunch together and just, you know, follow the path of the tree just for this lower section. Don't need to do too many of those. And then I'm going to switch to the third color on the bottom row and probably more emphasized on this side initially, although we will extend it to the rest. Still at the same brush settings. I'm going to bring it over here. We don't need to worry about being neat on the edge because clipping mask means that we can't extend beyond the boundary of the tree we've already established, which is great, even though it's on a new layer. So we can just whiz along that edge again, starting to bring out, but now I'm starting to tap it in. So we've got some broken, what kind of tree bark texture really? So we're following the twists and those lines, but I'm just sort of tapping it in. So follow the lines, but tap it, allow it to become more broken. Press more lightly over at this side, perhaps, perhaps even turn the opacity down 20%. And extend branch joining it in from over here. Extend some of that up into these tree branches too. I'm going to switch to the six color on the top row and again just start to tap away around this edge a little bit more perhaps i'll turn the size of the brush down into the one percent and we're going to get bits of the tree that are really picking up a highlight and reflecting back some of the bright sunlight it would be strange if it didn't and just chip away at this edge Again, I'm just tapping it in as I'm kind of moving along. And then we can just maybe pick out some of the shapes, that tree a little bit more, which you can start to see. And get up to here, it can just fade out a little bit more. Again, bring it in, in between some of those shapes. Zoom back out, you can start to see the effect is working. We'll go for the sixth color on the middle row and perhaps put the opacity up to 40. And we can just start to bring in some extra brightness. Now, again, we've got a strong light, so we need to make sure that that is having an impact. Go 
and along that edge just reduce some of the sharpness on that edge. But allow some of this brightness to kind of clump together and reflect back some of that light. Just going to go for the ninth colour on the bottom row with the brush still at, well, I'm going to put it to 5% size, low at about 10% opacity. We've just got clipping mask on, so I'm just going to subdue some of these branches as they disappear into the foliage. They just need a slightly more, I don't know, just a softer look as they disappear up there. Just for these branches as they disappear into the foliage there. That will soften it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go to the top and create a new layer. I'm going to stay on the medium brush within airbrushing, but we're going to go for this kind of bluey colour on the middle row, the ninth colour. I'm going to turn it down to 2% size and about 30% opacity. Zoom in. And we're just going to start adding some shapes. Perhaps we'll turn it down a touch more to the lowest part of 2%. And we can have that encroaching up into the tree a little bit. I've got some cooler tones extending out. Some flat shapes, some rocks, we can go over that. Just create some sort of slabs, some flat features, things that stick up. Don't have to be particularly distinct with this or precise, but you can start to see some shapes form. I hope you can appreciate that I'm really not spending a lot of time on these and just kind of getting them in there. The shapes. And then we'll go to the end colour on the middle row with a lower opacity, so maybe about 15. And we can start to just add some highlights into the landscape too. So we're going to use a combination between the last colour, the tenth colour, and the sixth colour. Two slightly different kind of bright colours. We want this edge of the rocks to be picking up the light. So look for those shapes, look for the edge, and just maybe add highlights. That's not to say you're restricted to those areas because you might get whole areas. Let's turn the opacity up to 30%. You might get new areas here where you really don't see much of the blue, but you do see a lot of that light color. Again, just keep some broken shapes. Extend it down. Maybe as it comes down here, it just starts to trail off. Now, I want there to be an area perhaps that is more of a shadow area. We're not going to have as much. Not to say we'll have none, but we're just going kind of creating a direction with these forms, these rocks. And then it gives the sense that, you know, there's a collection of rocks that have been subject to the same conditions. If you keep the same angle of the brush, it creates a uniformity, I think, that works a bit better. I'm using a kind of diagonal this way with my gestures, with my brush marks. Again, back to the end colour. Tapping it in in some places. Back to that colour. I think the sixth colour works a little bit better. If you want it to be more subtle, you can just turn it down 15%. Okay, so we're going to create a new layer, layer 15. And I'm going to go in with the Rainforest brush within Organic. Same settings as before. We're going to go in initially with the seventh colour on the middle row. Lowest part of 2% size and quite strong at 80% opacity. And I'm going to just go in there and create kind of tufts. Zoom in. Collections of little bits of kind of tufty grass. Organic things growing here. Little grass and bushes. Importantly, I want to keep it quite separated so that the dark background blue still shows through in many areas. 
So I'm just working in and around those rock structures. It can be quite sparse in some areas. Some areas it's going to be a little bit more. When it gets further away, maybe it condenses a little bit more as well. You can have variety. So some areas perhaps you can just scribble together and create a more of a, a block of it. And other areas it really is starting to fragment and become separated and you can start to see some of the effect there put it up slightly higher on the two percent when it gets closer to us again just scribble in little puffs this is the more muted color for the shadow areas and we're going to go over it with a brighter or well, selection of brighter tones to represent the same feature but when it's being more directly impacted by the sun but we just need the muted one first and then we'll go over it with brighter tones. So that will be the muted tone. We'll go maybe to the sixth color on the bottom row, lowest part of 2%, and just a bit more back, so 60% opacity. And well, we've got a strong light here, so it's gonna impact here. Maybe there's a, a center area that's more shadow, and then on this area, there's more light again. So we'll start with this area. We'll put it back up again, actually. Put it up to 70. And we can just start to add in some of these highlights, maybe into the 1%, in fact. And we can just go over these. Again, scribbling tufts. To a certain extent, we're going over and obliterating what we just created, but that's fine. I'd rather do the groundwork, create the muted tone, and then you've got something to compare it with and contrast with it. Again, it can bunch together to a certain extent. You can also go for the end color on the middle row. You can really push those highlights a little bit more too. I'm pressing on lightly for this though, because we've got it set quite high. Back to the sixth color, move along this way. And we can, again, just work in some of these tufts. Perhaps we'll put it back up to the, maybe even a higher part on 2%. We're working more in the foreground here, so we can really allow it to start to bunch together into larger shapes. Really coalesce and merge together, that's fine. Back to the 1%. We're going to put in some areas here, perhaps. Working in and around the stones. One percent, maybe we just need to be a bit more controlled. Maybe there's just some dappled light that's peeking through here onto the tufts. Try to imagine it in relation to the beams of light that come from the sun and then the shadow created by the tree. Perhaps we'll go for the brighter color again. Maybe we'll go for the seventh color on the top row. Yeah, that's quite a nice, nice contrast. Still got the warmth, but it's quite bright and that, that really works. And you can start to see it has a real kind of dappled light that I think works nicely. And we can do the same up here as well. It's always about color combinations, I think. So. A colour on its own sometimes just doesn't really do the trick, but when you put it in connection with a few colours, then it can really just have the desired effect. And I'll bring it over here. Put it up again, 2% size. Bring in some of these highlights over to this region. I'll come back to some of these textures, but I'm going to create a new layer, layer 16, and I'm going to go in with the eighth color, same brush, same settings. So 2% size, 70% opacity. And I just want to bring some of the warmth from the tree into the ground environment too. So some red areas on the ground, things that are growing, catching the light. Again, we can have something in the shadow here. 
then some of these red things into the scene various places you know it's not got this, the right vibrancy in some areas but that's fine we're going to add another layer to extend this quality but we're just getting the base the red areas in there to begin with so just some clumps collections of this red tone that kind of resembles what the colors we've got in the tree as well and you can see now it's still quite rough and that's fine for this stage so we're going to create a new layer layer 17 and going to change the normal blend mode to add and we're going to stay with the same color but this time we're going to go for the top of this bush here for example and it's just going to catch the light in a different way when it's in the direct sun same here and this one but then when we get into this area perhaps you're just going to catch it just a little bit here but not much a little bit and then again when we get over here perhaps turn it down to the one percent and then we can really just have some of these popping and being a bit more vibrant again over on this side back to the top layer so on this top layer i'm also going to go in with some of the other colors so i've got this end color on the middle row i'm going to go in with the airbrushing perhaps the medium hard brush turn it down to lowest part of two percent 30 percent opacity and i'm just going to go in and i'm going to bring out some of the lights as it shines off some of these rocks so i'm creating a real strong sense of highlight reflection Just thinking about the edges that face that sun, including the tree. We can turn that opacity down from 30 to 10. For some of these areas that want to be there and having a strong impact, but we just want to build up more gradually. Make some different areas of texture on these rocks perhaps so it's not just one part some texture back here as well or highlights just catching the light a little bit especially as we're coming encroaching onto this area again build it up go over it a few times and build in that highlight again over there and back up to the 30% and again we can just build in some shapes here rock edges that are just catching the light again keep that angle that we had so that diagonal and scribble over areas really brighten up can you continue to push it now again another area here just scribble it together and anything that was already there is just ramping up be adding new layers to it all the time scribble over it join it up with something else and you start to see some of those rock shapes really starting to work a bit better again scribble over certain areas blend them together some rocks up here just create some highlights on the very top maybe not too much Again, up here, scribble some areas together. It's a really nice way of just kind of pushing them, making them work. Just a few hints of it over in this area. Remember, we've got a large area in shadow there. Having said that, we could just add a nice rock here, maybe. Could just be just about catching the light. I'm going to go back to layer 14 with the medium brush with an airbrushing the ninth color on the middle row set to two percent size 30 percent opacity and again i'm just going to go in there and just add some further definition suggestion of things perhaps 30 percent is a bit strong 20 percent and yeah i can just go in there and define some of these rocks a little bit more Similar to what we're doing over here, kind of scribble, clump areas together, create bigger forms out of some of the fragments. Sometimes that can work better. Scribble them together. 
Got some smaller pieces down here still in the shadow. And of course, we've got the tree up here. We can just bring some of that into the mix. So we bring that blue into the tree a little more. Back up to layer 15. Back in with the sevens color on the top row with the organic rainforest brush, 2% size, 70% opacity, and just need to go back in there and just push some of these bright colors a little bit more. That and maybe the six color on the bottom row, so a combination of those two. We started off as little tufts and that still works in principle, but maybe as it gets further away, they can just start to condense together a little bit more. And then as we come further into the shadow area, we get those breaks and those tufts starting to become more apparent then. Then obviously we go back to the seventh color on the middle row and then that color into this, which is more the shadow version of the same color. So same element, it would be the same color except for it's in shadow. When we get to here, again, it crosses a boundary into the light and then it becomes a different colored version of it, which I think that effect works. Again, back to the seventh color on the top row and we can just keep pushing that up here and the sixth color on the bottom row. Again, just that combination I think is really important. Back again to the seventh color, 1% size perhaps. And just create some of these highlights with a bit more accuracy, a bit more control. I do feel that the color here is a little bit too warm. So I'm gonna go back to that layer. If we can find it, layer seven it was. I can see it there, if I move it, layer seven. I'm gonna to go to that, go to the adjustments, go to the hue, saturation and brightness. I'm just gonna change the hue from 50, I'm gonna slide it left make it more purple. I'm gonna put it to about the 30%. And then I'm also gonna darken it up slightly, put it at 49. I think just that slightly more bluey purple tone blends in better with everything else that we've got. Back to layer 17 with the medium hard brush. I'm gonna go in for the end color on the middle row, 1% size, about 30% strength opacity, and just a little bit more refinement on the rocks. Just sharpen up the highlights in places. Create some more kind of sharper details, some slightly fragmented highlights. Okay, I'm gonna do something now that enables us to play around with layers that are not only on the blend mode of normal, but add at the same time. So it's a bit of a strange thing I'm gonna do, but we're gonna to go to the wrench, add, copy canvas, and then paste. And we're gonna make sure it's at the very top, which it is. Then we're gonna to go to the selection, freehand, and I'm gonna trace around the bottom area not too much, that kind of a shape. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm just gonna blur it in to about the 5%, deselect, and then I'm gonna do it again, selection, freehand, and then a smaller section at the bottom. Close, and then we go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in, another 5%, deselect. And it's just gonna push the focus a little bit more up here, means we don't need to have as much refined detail here anyway. It just pushes it more this way. Now, obviously that's on a whole separate layer now, so we can't really go back and amend any of these things. So you wouldn't want to do that until we're really at the end stages. Okay, we could definitely keep refining this indefinitely, but I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. If you enjoy painting trees, you might also like one of my other tutorials, which is a floating tree island. I enjoyed it. I think you might too. Otherwise, I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.